Greetings, DFG here, Gideon's Flight. Hey uh, everyone, I wanted to take uh, a few minutes and just talk about a couple of things uh, that that um, that, that's on my mind, that's concerning, and I, as you know, uh, we the men of Gideon Flight um, pride ourselves in you know being socially conscious as well as um, socially uh, engaged or involved. And a particular matter, um, not even a matter, I guess, um, a concern, and it's a concern that some of you may be aware of, some may not be. Um, first, uh, I want to talk about the situation uh, down in uh, Atlanta. And this is regarding the, uh, the whole problem with um, HIV and um, AIDS and um, the, the devastation that is having um, in the uh, African American community there. And um, if you haven't been keeping up um, with what's going on uh, in relationship to uh, the, the problems that, that, that they're having, especially in inner city Atlanta, uh, Grady Hospital is, is, is a major hospital in Atlanta and it has. Um, from what I understand, clinics uh, that are also associated with the hospital, and they've gone through now, and they're doing HIV testing, and and they're saying now, uh, where they're testing, they're finding uh, uh, the situation being almost one out of three individuals that they're testing are coming back HIV positive, and um, it was mentioned that the uh, academ epidemic of HIV there now is is is, is um, on the same level as a third world country, which is extremely concerning. And I bring that up, you know, um, as I said earlier, for a couple of reasons. First, you know, I'm, tr I'm wondering where are all the spiritual leaders um, around, the, uh, around this country? I'm talking about the mega church spiritual leaders, the Crefro Dollars, the T.D. Jakes, uh, the, um, I would say Eddie Long, but I think we probably know why he wouldn't be talking about it, right? But the Joel Osteens, you know, the Joyce Myers. Uh, how could you be God's prophets and God's representatives and you don't warn people of something as, 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 as big and devastating as AIDS, you know, affecting one out of 50 people in any community in the United States of America? And, uh, and not talk about, you know, why something like that could happen as well as educate you know, the general public, all of these, these parishioners or followers or contributors to your ministry, your so-called flock, you know, without explaining to them how this is happening and why it's happening. And, you know, and then to say that you men and women of God is almost a, a, it's disrespectful to a true believer like myself. And, you know, and, and when I say that, I say that in all sincerity. And I'm not talking about perfect because Jesus, are you sure? I'll say his name correctly, as I want to pronounce it, said it wasn't those who were whole that needed a physician, it was those that are sick. So it's nothing wrong with having challenges and, and following the law. There's nothing wrong with, you know, uh, of not being imperfect and following the law. It's, a lot wrong, it's something wrong with not accepting it or not you know, being transparent and upfront about, you know, those issues that you might be facing and being willing whether or not you're struggling to get yourself right, be, at least be willing to say, I know what I'm doing is wrong, but it's, 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 it's really sad that, that they're not talking about this stuff with the individuals. They're not telling them that the major causes, at least, I'm not even going to say the major causes, because that, you know, gets all of these uh, so-called, I don't even want to get into what we want to, I'm not going to get into name calls, <laughs> I apologize, guys, because I, I don't want to come across offensive, and that's why I'm, I'm being somewhat careful with how I say things. Not that it matters at the end of the day if someone gets offended. If you're getting offended with the truth, then be offended. But, you know, when you look at HIV and AIDS, the, the, the number one and number two, and you can research it for yourself, the, the number one and number two uh, in classes or groups of people that are being infected is homosexual men and bisexual men. And I know people will say, well, you can get it through a heterosexual relationship. Nobody's questioning that. But the number one and number two reasons are highest the number one and number two high risk um, 
uh, behaviors are again homosexuality, homosexual or gay men, and bisexual men, and to not talk about that, but yet embrace, you know, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, transgender policies and laws, and embrace, you know, you know, gay marriage, and you know, and to embrace, you know, uh, gay unions. I have no issue in terms of what a person wants to do. It's, it's your life. You do what you want to do with the life. But if you call yourself a man or a woman of God, you have a responsibility to say, thus says the Lord, not what pleases the man. And if there's something that's going to harm them, you need to say, okay, if you're making these decisions, that's fine. You have a right to live your life the way you need to be, the way you want to live it. And you have a right not to be discriminated because of it. But if you smoke crack cocaine, you're going to end up probably in the streets, broke, busted, and out of your mind. Now, there's nothing wrong with saying that because that's a, that's a consequence of that behavior or at least a possible consequence of that behavior. And so I'm saying that any lifestyle that creates uh, a, a, a risk factor where people are dying from it, you need to talk about the, 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 the other side of it, the, the, the hidden side of it. And these guys are not talking about it at all. And the reason they're not talking about it because I think that because they're taking, you know, tax money from the government, you know, nonprofit organizations being funded, you know, by the government, that they'd rather let you die, let your loved ones die, to make sure that they stay in good standings with the government to keep that money coming. And that's sad. And, you know, I don't even blame them anymore. Uh, in the book of Ezekiel, he called them dumb, greedy dogs. And he also said any preacher that does not preach what God says is a dog. And he said that any person that will follow that preacher and that preacher is going astray, that you about as, that you're as, as ignorant as the preacher is. So, and he says that if that preacher tells you right from wrong, I think it's Ezekiel 30, chapter 3 and 33, then that preacher hands is clean. If he comes and says, look, guys, if you live this lifestyle, here's the consequences, not of this is not what God it's not God's best for you. But he's also saying that if you don't tell the people, if you tell the people, their blood is on them. In other words, they're responsible for their own decisions. If you tell them or you know or don't tell them then their blood is on your hand and it's on their hand so it's no excuse so all I'm trying to say is if you're living in that lifestyle you know then you you need to be very very mindful that you know you are putting yourself in an environment that's extremely high risk for your life to be shortened and to end in a very unpleasant way and I that you know I think that so-called men of God who won't talk about it are not really men of God. They're just false prophets looking to make a dollar off of the blind. Those who don't know God or those who think they know God, but they're following a shepherd who's blind, so therefore it's the blind leading the blind. All right? That's number one. Then the second thing, I'll make this really quick. Watching the documentary the other day talking about Rikers Island. And how that, you know, the prison system, matter of fact, the jail system in Rikers are 17,000 inmates. And in those 17,000 inmates, 90% uh, of them are African American and Spanish. And not only that, 92% of them don't have the equivalent of a high school education. And, there's a, and right now, the, the prison, the jail there is operating on a $1 billion annual budget. And I bring that up is to tell you that. If anybody is thinking that somehow or another this is coincidental, 90% of New York is not black and Hispanic. I guarantee you that. And when you look at a, a, a business that's doing over a billion dollars a year with the city, you can best believe they're going to keep feeding black and Hispanic men into that prison system. So they, whether they create charges, trumped up charges, you know, laws that, that are, that are anti-poor, you know. Um, poor, whatever they have to do to keep you coming in there. And here's the number one reason why. You cannot allow all of those individuals who are siphoning off of that billion dollars, the people who provide clothes for the prison, the people who provide, provide food for the prison, the people who provide the transportation for the prison, the lawyers, the judges, the police officers, um, the, 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 the Medicaid or Medicaid, Medicaid Medi you know, the medical benefits uh, the insurance companies that are able to charge the city for the assistance or for the health care they're providing those prisoners, the pharmaceutical companies, 
who are providing drugs for those prisoners in, in that have been diagnosed with some type of mental problems and, Ill, and illness, and there's a bunch of them, all those people would be unemployed. Think what that would do for the tax base in the city of New York. It would crash it. You know, all those people who are, who are feeding off of that billion dollars, all those people would be in the unemployment line, not paying taxes. Therefore, they're not going to let that happen, and they're going to continue to create an environment, a hostile environment, for the poor, you follow me, for those who are uneducated and for those who are lacking, you know, you know, uh, an opportunity to earn a decent wage for a decent, to make, you know, to have a decent lifestyle. So that's just some food, FYI, just so you know. And, you know, what's the answers? What's the solutions? There are many. We'll talk about those in other videos. But I will tell you one thing, Gideon's Flight, as an organization, you know, uh, primarily for men, but for all people, we're not going to sit aside, side, sit, side, sit aside silently and not, not only talk about these things, but dissuade men and women from allowing themselves to be victims, you know what I'm saying, of a system that's dead set to take advantage of the ignorant and the poor and the uneducated, whether it's the religious dogma and dogs or the political dogma and dogs. You know, as my mom said, if it barks like a dog and it poops like a dog and looks like a dog, it's a dog. Peace. Now you know. DFG. Gideon's flight. Thanks for listening. Bye.